the rise of the interstate, its impact on rural America, a boom in female truckers, self-driving freight rigs, a secret lingo, and an iconic American pit stop. Some know them as the kings of the road. Others call them Bubba. Anyone who's spent any time on the highway is familiar with semi-trucks and the respect they command. Here, truckers across the U.S. drive 200 billion miles and transport over $720 billion worth of goods. This makes trucks the most significant mode of shipping in the freight industry. Without them, shelves would run dry in our grocery stores, we wouldn't have next day deliveries, and the life we've grown accustomed to would change forever. Basically, to the general public, we are invisible unless something goes wrong. To keep drivers happy and comfortable on the road, there are places like Iowa 80, the world's largest truck stop. The great thing about Iowa 80 is there's something for everyone, and there's a lot of stuff. more truckers in the United States than anywhere else on the planet. With 3.6 million American truckers, it makes sense that the world's largest truck stop is located right in the middle of the United States. Today, Iowa 80 is an essential pit stop for truckers crossing the interior of the country. But it wasn't always here. It wasn't always needed. Before the 1900s, the majority of America's freight was transported via railroad. After the cargo was dropped off in central depots, it was loaded onto horse-drawn carts and delivered to businesses and farms. However, when the gasoline-powered internal combustion engine met functional designs that allowed for significantly higher payloads, modern trucks hit the ground at a maximum speed of 15 miles per hour. Things accelerated quickly with the introduction of diesel engines, which were up to 40% more efficient than earlier models. By 1912, there were over 10,000 trucks on the road in the United States, but they were slow. At that time, it took 31 days to get from Seattle to New York City. Soon after, the Great War took the world by storm. Railways became clogged with wartime cargo, and the American people needed an alternative cross-country shipping method. With the addition of technologies like power steering and pneumatic tires, trucks were up to the task, and industry in America was roaring. Until... In an attempt to save his stricken country, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt created the New Deal, a series of reforms meant to revive the economy and put Americans back to work. America, here is a record of it to judge for yourself. Vital to the communities which they serve are the thousands of miles of highways constructed and improved by the works program. In the midst of this, the American Trucking Association was formed. Twenty years later, President Eisenhower enacted the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, which aimed to build 41,000 miles of interstate highways over a 10-year period. With well-maintained roads and bridges now spanning the country, you speed right past rural communities. They were celebrating by bits and pieces the completion of the greatest network of highways ever built by man. In effect, the fragile economies of the bypass towns were squashed. One of the interstates still under construction was I-80, stretching from New York City to Oakland, California. The route it took was direct, but because it cut out these small towns, there were next to zero places to rest, refuel, and relax between the large cities of Chicago and Des Moines. An enterprising Iowan by the name of Bill Moon saw an opportunity. He built the Iowa 80 truck stop and didn't have much success until 1976. 
The interstate was completed, and at long last, the coasts were connected by 2,900 miles of I-80. Drivers flocked to Bill's truck stop. By this time, there were 20 million trucks on the road, and the culture which had begun to grow in the industry hit the mainstream. The trucking industry was booming, and so was the truck stop. After 28 expansions and remodels, the Iowa 80 truck stop is now the largest in the world. If you want something to eat, we have eight different restaurants. We have a fast food court, and then we also have a 24-hour sit-down restaurant called the Iowa 80 Kitchen. We have a barber, a dentist, a chiropractor, Oh. We have a chapel on Sundays, we have a movie theater, we have a TV room, we have 24 private showers, we also have the super truck showroom which has over 50,000 different items of chrome, lights, anything a driver could possibly need or want. We have a gift store, we also have a truck scale for drivers that need to know what they weigh. We have a seven bay service center for any repairs or oil changes that a driver might need. We have a truck -a mat truck wash kind of like a full service car wash only for semis. We have people that hand brush and scrub the trucks. And we have a dog -a mat pet wash. That's a lot. So how many truck drivers are there in the US? There are about three million professional drivers in the United States. And we get about 5,000 customers a day and probably half of those are drivers. So I would say in the course of a year, we're probably seeing a million to a million and a half drivers. And where are we standing? Uh, what is this place? <laughs> this is the Iowa 80 Trucking Museum. And this is a labor of love, basically. According to the Census Bureau, the number is closer to 3.5 million truckers, making up about 6% of all full-time jobs in America. We met one of those drivers. On the road, he's known as Big Bear. So as far as like life on the road goes, what's the culture like with that? I mean, you know, you have your, your CB radios and you have people that you're well, communicating with, but what's the culture like in, in the cab and, and on the road? Be honest with you, it get, it get boring. Sometimes, depends on, like I say, if you run a long distance a lot, you know. To me, it's just peace, peace of mind, you know. I tried the nine to five and it just don't work that easy. <laughs> I, I, it's a whole lot better for me to just drive. And it's funny, when I get back, it's, it's a bunch of chaos. When I go road, it's peace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's peace, so you know, uh, it's just peace of mind to me. It do get hard out here when you're by yourself all the time, because you get lonely, you get bored, you know. Yeah. And you can come to a place like this here, you know, to, you know, get your mind off other things as well. One popular distraction here is shopping for the latest gadgets and accessories for their rigs. really like all the stuff they got in here because there's a lot of stuff and they give me a lot of ideas for what I'm doing with my truck. I need yeah. to get out of here because I'm starting to spend money. But <laughs> a big part of it is being here and seeing all of the different vehicles and all the mods and personalizations that the other truck drivers have. Is yeah, you get a whole lot of good ideas. Yeah. A whole lot of good ideas what you can do to your truck. Is that a big part of the trucking culture? Oh yeah, I mean you want to you look nice, you want to look good going down the road. Yeah. You know, make it feel good, you know, good, nice and ride good, you know, yeah. I mean, you want to be king of the road, right? Uh, we are the king of the road, yeah. but you want to look the part. Yeah. <laughs> you want to look the part, yeah. Big Bear may have said king of the road, but 6% of all truckers in the U.S. are women. This might not seem like much, but the number of female drivers has increased by 68% since 2010. It's a really good place for anybody that's new to trucking or they've been at trucking for a while, so yeah. yeah. And <laughs> Whoa! 
And so how is the community built around places like this? You know, I mean, I'm sure you run into people that you've seen before at the yeah. same place. Yeah. Um, well, if, we, if I do run into somebody, I guess, as they say, like when I was in trucking school, well, it's not too often, but, uh, you know, um, we try to, as truck drivers, make, you know, new friends while we're out here and stuff like that. Some are old, some are young. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we try to be, as they say, friendly with one another. Drivers are required to follow many strict regulations to help keep the roads safe. They have to keep a driver's log. They can't drive more than 11 hours straight. Every 8 hours, they must take a 30-minute break. Every 14 hours, they have to take a full 10 hours rest. With all of this mandatory downtime, places like this are essential. And, and, and what do you do to your rig to set it apart from the others? It goes, sometimes it goes faster. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look, it's a mess. Oh, baby. So this so. is uh, your humble abode. Yeah. Do you mind if we take a look? Go ahead. Right on. Well, I told you it's messy. <laughs> I've never been in a in a rig before. Oh man. Yeah, no, this is Oh. It's roomy. Got the microwave, got the food stores. Yeah, the TV right here in the bed. That's crazy. That is wild. You can definitely see how people are living out of their rigs. I can't picture myself doing it, but I mean, it's the way of the road, I guess. <laughs> Another feature often found in the cab is a citizen's band radio, aka the CB radio. With these, truckers can communicate with fellow drivers nearby on the road. Unsurprisingly, a complicated lingo has developed over the years. How do I tell others uh, about an accident ahead? You're going to say something like, hey, westbound, you got your ears on? You got a 1042 in the comedian, you're on yardstick 222. So that means westbound, if you're listening, there's an accident near the median around mile marker 222? Ah, you're learning there, Green P. Others include Black Eye, Bear in the Bushes, Bambi, Bumper Sticker. Cash register, convoy, evil Knievel, flip flop, greasy side up, gumball machine, go jack with a Kodak, lot lizard, meat wagon, road pizza, salt shaker, sandbox, skateboard, roller skate, and toothpicks. Trucks are still evolving. Look at all that has changed since the advancements we mentioned earlier in the episode. Amazing new brakes, improved aerodynamics, greatly increased hauling capacity, and the advancements show no signs of stopping. Well, uh, automated driving is becoming a huge thing, and I think they're really trying to target the trucking industry because that's a, a big employer and that would be a huge money saver, which would kind of like eliminate truck drivers. How would this place, what's the future of this place? Well, there's a lot of talk about autonomous vehicles, but autonomous doesn't mean driverless. Those are two different things. And autonomous means that some of the things would be automated, but I truly believe that you're still gonna need a driver in that cab, much like you need a pilot in an airplane. Everybody knows airplanes can fly themselves. Do you really wanna get on the plane when there's nobody flying it? There's nobody that can react in an emergency? Same thing with an 80,000 pound truck driving down the road. Do you really want to not have somebody in there that can take over if something goes wrong? Because as we all know, computers glitch. I mean, that just happens. Think about your phone when it freaks out or your laptop doesn't load right or needs to be rebooted. You know, things are going to happen. So the best plan is to have somebody there that is trained to, to recover that and be able to drive that truck. Over the long history of trucking in America, a rich and colorful culture has developed. The rigs, their language, the people, they all come together right here amidst the cornfields of Iowa at the world's largest truck stop. When we started off the cuff, we thought it was a good idea, but we didn't know why. It wasn't until we released the show and started hearing from you that we found the answer. 
Whether you've dedicated your life to reenacting a medieval society, have a lawless enthusiasm for cars, or you seek transcendence in a cornfield, we are all strange in our own ways. Harris and I commit a lot of our lives to making this show. Through this, we've realized that everyone is equally dedicated to something, and chances are it's something that others may consider strange. If we can recognize that, then maybe we can break the divides we have with one another, and fully embrace who we are. So as we embark on season two of Off the Cuff, we simply ask that, along with us, you explore something new.